Okay, hello and welcome to our class on research writing and presentations all in English. This class has some special uh, topics and some special challenges this semester, especially in its distance education format. First half of the class is going to be all research writing and that's where we're going to begin today in the video you're about to watch. And the second half is going to be presentation, which I've done before, so we've got some of those videos maybe you can see, and I'm going to record that again, try to make them a little bit smoother. So let's begin with today's uh, class. Today will be the first time we actually begin working on our topics, and to pay attention in this class, some of the key points include getting the material to students, and also me just getting back up to speed on all of the equipment using and all of that. I had to set up all my cameras again, I had to get used to all the different camera angles, and I had to get used to doing the hardest part, which is switching while I'm talking to students. So you may notice the video is a little bit rough today, not very smooth, not a lot of editing going on, that's because I'm just getting used to things. Okay, the other thing to pay attention to is I begin by showing students the key components that we're going to follow in this class and one of them is software, especially open source and free software, how to help your thesis with that, and of course a few books that we're going to look at. So today I had them get ready with a really excellent book on writing your research dissertation. And here we can see, here's an example from the book actually, right here, which is really cool. You can just see, uh, here's the average time you can expect to take on working at different parts of your dissertation or thesis, and it adds up to 100%. That's just one little example of this book and some of the really cool things it has in it. What is this book? Let me uh, page up here then quickly so you can see. It has a good, uh, a good layout of the average time for each section of your dissertation, etc., etc. This book is called Writing the Doctoral Dissertation, and it's by Davis and Park Parkinson. Parkinson, isn't it? Zoom out a little bit. There we go. Parker. So, um, Davis and Parker. Now I think the book is actually out of print, so it's a little bit hard to get, but it's a great book to use in this kind of situation. The other book, of course, we go into is the APA Style Guide, which every business student who's writing a thesis or dissertation will have to get a hold of. The biggest problem or challenge to this is that students feel they just go to Google and Google something. The reason I like to use the APA style guide, the actual book or the e-version or some, some component, uh, some de de uh, derivative of that, is that I want to show them all the style guide. You know, they just have a real hard time to understand that, you know, you can't just check Google and there's a rule. If they don't understand that there's a whole flow to the style guide, there's many things covered, everything basically is covered, then, you know, they just end up everything is a case-by-case -case basis, a special case and their dissertation thesis inside is just a mess, very inconsistent. So in this class I want to emphasize that. So those two books really helped me. One, the APA Style Guide, and the other one, Writing the Doctoral Dissertation. Now, doctoral is for the doctorate, a PhD, but in Taiwan, in China, I think in Japan, a lot of these countries, the master degree requires a thesis to be written, and it's very similar. And the advice in this book is not highly technical. It's really about scheduling your time, how to get a topic, how to get advisors, how to go through the process. The only things that don't apply are things related to publishing and you know how to get published or how to handle your committee in a very tough uh, defense situation. Um, those are just a very small part of this book. It's a great little book. Now this week I begin by starting off with our first software we're going to use, which is Gantt Project. So what I'm doing is I'm going to focus on getting students at the beginning working on schedules, understanding what to expect realistically about how to prepare. Young people, their biggest problem is time management, without a doubt. 
So I go ahead and I'm going to do that. The other thing I do is I get them ready with the books that I've prepared, which is a presentation book of mine and a book on research writing. Very basic, uh, lots of samples, and then the software, which is uh, Quick Research Writing. Let me jump over here, QRP. So I show them the website and they get a serial number, a registration number. So that's qrp.qbook.org and that's Quick Research Papers and they get a registration number and they can go ahead and log in and begin. And I'm going to give them their first assignment. So in today's class we're really kind of just kicking things off. Nothing to in depth yet. You want to pay attention that I do begin by having everyone in a Google Doc write within five words the topic that they're going to use in their thesis. They're too early to really know their topic yet, but the reason for this is I want to begin getting them thinking about how to narrow and focus their topic. And in today's video you'll see I spent a lot of time helping students kind of flush out and begin to narrow their topics. It's very difficult for students, young people, to understand what is this topic thing. It's also very hard for them to understand how do they find a professor, how do they begin with a topic. They often think they, especially here in Taiwan or in China, I think they want to go to the professor and say, tell me what to do. But in reality, I don't think there's a lot of professors waiting around a lot of time on their hands to tell graduate students what to do. So a motivated graduate student with a topic or at least an idea of how to find a topic is really useful and the teacher can give them a lot of guidance. At least I find that to be helpful when I guide students. So as you'll see in this class we emphasize those few points. Again I apologize if the video is a little bit rough. So let's go ahead to this video and then next week we're going to jump into a lot more interaction and feedback with the students including an actual written assignment.